Hello everybody, Mike Man WBA here and welcome back to Can't Stop Progress. This is episode number 21, chapter number 62 and we have got a massive stacked card today. So we're just going to get straight into it in front of 3,100 people, a sold out crowd at Alexandra Palace. We kick it off with a pre-show match. We have a four-way tag team, not joking, championship match, just a four-way tag team match. Uh, a couple of teams looking for a bit of momentum. Uh, we have Sweet Jesus, the Hunter Brothers, the London Riots, and the Origin. And in a pre-show bout that had decent wrestling but not a lot of heat, the Origin defeat these teams in 9 minutes and 53 seconds, eliminating first the Hunter Brothers, then Sweet Jesus, and then finally the London Riots. Um, Rob Lynch getting better at his gimmick, which is nice to see. William Eva unfortunately off his game. Uh, getting the lowest rating of the bunch with a 38. Chuck Mambo getting a 41. Lee Hunter getting a 52. Jim Hunter getting a 46. Rob Lynch a 53. James Davis a 47. Zach Gibson a 60. And Nathan Cruz a disappointing 40. Nathan Cruz, however, did improve his technical skills. And a 52 D plus rating overall is not too bad. And uh, hopefully... Getting on the winning side will get Nathan Cruz a bit of momentum and hopefully we can build his ratings back up. Uh, the Origin, two guys I've kind of neglected a little bit. Uh, they've taken quite a lot of losses. Um, so hopefully uh, they'll start to build themselves back up. And then following that, we start the show with Jim Swarman welcoming the crowd to four the bastard. Because yes, everybody, it's that time of the year where we have our Thunder Bastard match. Uh, winner, of course, gets a shot at a championship of their choice. Uh, I won't spoil anything for that yet, but we'll get back into that soon. As we go to the first match of the night, where in a poor match, Jack, Smith, Jack Sex Smith defeats Roy Johnson in 12 minutes and 16 seconds by submission to progress to the final of the Natural Progression series for 2018. Beats his good friend, Roy Johnson. Uh, announcing in colour commentary gave the match a boost. Sexsmith getting a 33. Johnson getting a 32. Johnson improving his flying skills. A 33 E plus rating isn't great. But it's what you'd expect from these two guys really. They're, um, they're promising young talent. But they're not quite there yet. Which is what the Natural Progression Series is all about. Um, so Jack Sexsmith through to the final. And following that. We just have uh, an awkward, but just Jack Sexsmith and Roy Johnson sort of uh, congratulating congratulating each other after the match. Johnson going for the handshake, Sexsmith grabbing him for a big hug. Uh, 22 E minus for that one. Following that one, our next match, uh, just an exhibition match where in a bout that had decent wrestling, but not a lot of heat, Jigsaw. Defeats Al Liguero in 13 minutes and 14 seconds by pinfall of a Cancun Tornado. So, the Battle of the Masks. Jigsaw just coming out on top. Both uh, guys have got pretty good chemistry with each other, which is nice to see. Al Liguero getting a 52, Jigsaw getting a 42. Um, so, decent in-ring performances. A 45D, a little bit disappointing, but not too bad. Uh, and Jigsaw makes his progress wrestling debut. Following that, we have another debut where in a decent match, Doug Williams defeats Morgan Webster in 12 minutes and 48 seconds by pinfall with a chaos theory. Unfortunately, Doug Williams' is a gimmick getting an initial rating of awful, so um, we're going to have to work towards building him a new one. But the, uh, the match got the crowd hotter. Doug Williams getting a 56 in-ring performance to Morgan Webster's 45. And Doug improving his performance skills, which is nice to see for a man of his experience. And a 52 D plus rating is not a bad debut for Doug Williams. Uh, and is a good match overall. Following that though, we have Doug Williams picking up the microphone. He wants to prove that British is better. And just because he's been around for a while doesn't mean that he can't beat these younger upstarts. And that uh, his experience will be key in proving how good he is. Uh, a 39D minus promo there. It's not too bad. 
Doug, obviously a legend of the British scene. Someone that has been, I think, only in progress the once before. So it's technically a re-debut, but uh, we haven't seen him on the series before. Uh, and it's been a good few years since he was in progress. And following that, we have our final match of the first half of the show, where in a decent match, Tyler Bate defeats Axel Dieter Jr., Joe Coffey, Mark Haskins, Matt Riddle and Austin Aries in 17 minutes and 8 seconds to win the Thunder Bastard. The order of elimination was Matt Riddle first, then Axel Dieter Jr., followed by Austin Aries, Mark Haskins and finally Joe Coffey. Matt Riddle unfortunately the weak link of these guys struggling to keep up with everyone else's in-ring performance. But Austin Aries getting an initial... Uh, sorry, Austin Aries getting an in-ring performance of 50, Axel Dieter Jr. getting a 53, Joe Coffey a 51, Mark Haskins a 59, Matt Riddle unfortunately only a 38, and Tyler Bate a 56. Matt Riddle now back from his MMA fight, which he did unfortunately lose, but he's back and ready to fight for his place on the roster again. Nice to see that the push that we gave to Joe Coffey while he was our Atlas champion has boosted his ratings up to compete with the likes of Austin Aries uh, and Axel Dieter Jr. And so Tyler Bate continues his little surge, uh, obviously replaced Pete Dunn as leader of British Strong Style and is now the number one contender for the Progress Championship, should he choose to go for that. Um, I don't think he'd be eligible for the, uh, the Atlas title, so he'd have to either go for the tag title or the champion, uh, Progress Championship, either or is a viable option for him. Following, oh actually I would take a quick look, Mark Haskins improving his performance skills, uh, which is good to see Haskins getting the highest rating in that one anyway. He uh, wants to get his chance at the, uh, at the title again, uh, a 51 D plus rating for the Thunder Bastard match. Following that, we have our first title match of the evening where in a decent match, Volta defeats the debuting Rhino in 13 minutes and 24 seconds by pinfall with a golden bomb. Walter making defence number two of his Atlas Championship title. Uh, Rhino getting an above average man beast gimmick with an in ring performance of 42 to Walter's 43. Um, don't really know why I bought Rhino in, to be perfectly honest. I just really like him. I'm a big fan of Rhino. Uh, and he became available, so I thought why not bring him in for a one-time match against Volta for the Progress Atlas Championship. I'd know I'd love to see that in real life. Um, but Walter beats off the ECW legend to retain his title for the second time. Following that, we have the second title match, the women's title match, where unfortunately in a poor match, Ginny defeats... The ICW Women's Champion Sierra Loxton in 30 minutes and 30 seconds by pinfall with a middle rope X-Factor. Ginny making defence number four of her women's title. Um, Sierra Loxton's weirdo gimmick got an above average. Her in-ring performance is a 34 to Ginny's 48, so Ginny definitely carried the match there to a 46D rating overall. Following that, not a very good rating there probably shouldn't have rated this on Overness, but we have a little video hyping up Tessa Blanchard as Ginny's next opponent. Um, her old school heel gimmick apparently, getting an average, I probably should have checked that one beforehand. No work improvements. If I'd have rated that on something other than Overness, that definitely would have got more than a 4, but Tessa Blanchard apparently not being used. She is in WCPW, so I just thought she'd have had a bit of pop in the UK, but apparently not. So we get a 4F- minus for that, which isn't obviously great, but uh, hopefully won't make too much of a difference to our show rating. Following that, we get back to our lovely, lovely ratings, where in a decent match, hashtag CCK defeat FSU and the leaders of the new school in 18 minutes and 20 seconds when Kid Lycos defeats Eddie Dennis by pinfall with a sliced bread number two. And CCK win the Progress Tag Team titles. Uh, 
Zack Sabre Jr. head and shoulders above everyone else, getting himself an 81 rating to Kid Lycos is 60, Chris Brooks is 37, Eddie Dennis is 37, Mark Andrews 59, and Marty Skull 62. Unfortunately, Chris Brooks was off his game, but he is the new Progress Tag Team Champion alongside his partner Kid Lycos, and Eddie Dennis improves his performance skills uh, in a 68 C plus match, which is very nice to see for probably our three biggest tag teams in the company. Uh, following that, we have, I believe, the main event of the evening, and we do. We're in a decent match. The Kiwi Buzzsaw, Travis Banks, defeats Will Ospreay in 17 minutes and 57 seconds by pinfall with an airplane slam. And Travis Banks wins the Progress Championship title. Travis Banks, visibly tiring towards the end, couldn't quite... Uh, he struggled to go at the full 18 minutes all out. Um, Osprey unfortunately off his game, but still managing to get a very, very impressive 68 in-ring performance. Travis Banks getting a 48. No work improvements to uh, comment upon there, but a 62C main event isn't too bad. And following that, we have the three members of CCK, Kid Lycos, Chris Brooks and Travis Banks, all celebrating in the ring. They now have probably the two biggest titles in the company with the Tag Team Championships and the uh, main championship. The first time since British Strong Style and Pete Dunne held the bouts that a stable has had more than one title. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. And overall we get a 59C show rating, increasing our popularity in 45 regions. It's a little bit lower than what we've had recently, but I'm not going to complain about it. We got a lot done that we wanted to happen. We had a few debuts on the show, and uh, obviously that four uh, promo rating from Tessa Blanchard would have uh, probably knocked us a little bit, but I'm happy with that nonetheless. And of course, Zack Sabre Jr. has to have uh, some praise for being phenomenal as always. Will Ospreay can get one, he dropped the bout, so we don't want him being too unhappy. And I think Doug Williams can have one as well, he had a decent debut. So, those guys are happy with that. As we look at the aftermath of that show. We are now in April. And as we take a look at our mail, we came first across the UK in terms of our regional battle. Rhino has left progress. Interesting. Mark Haskins and Zach Gibson have completed their tours with New Japan. New Japan have, however, made a contract offer to Flamita, Zach Sabre Jr. and Lewis Gervin to go on their next tours. I'm assuming it's a touring deal. I'll have a quick look. Um, yeah. Another touring deal, so Lewis Gervin, Zack Sabre Jr. and Flamita potentially off to tour with New Japan for the next couple of months. Sorry if you heard my chair there. Um, we'll get rid of those. And as we look on here, interesting to see AJ Styles has defeated Bray Wyatt to become the WWE World Champion for the second time. At uh, WrestleMania 34, I didn't think about that being uh, about it being WrestleMania. Uh, I'll have a quick look. John Cena beats Ziggler, uh, match of the night on a 95. Surprisingly, AJ Styles, Bray Wyatt only a 78. Possibly a little bit of um, AJ Styles' age coming in there as a factor. Ryder defeating Big E to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Carmella defeating Kimberly to retain the SmackDown Championship. In what appears to be a SmackDown exclusive WrestleMania, which is an interesting decision. Um, we also had Jey Uso defeating Mojo Rawley and Simon Gotch defeating Victor. So, not the most exciting of WrestleManias, but uh, we do see AJ Styles winning the World Championship, which I'm sure will make a lot of people very happy. Um, 
if we look at progress 62 feedback has been excellent the show went down really well which is always nice to see uh, sold out crowd 127,000 viewers on pivot share um, and I think following that it might be time for another couple of US shows obviously progress have some US shows coming up in real life they've got New York and Boston uh, doing a little East Coast tour so maybe we'll have to go over there as well but thank you everyone for watching this episode I will see you again in the next one Goodbye.